Well, again, if you got any requests, uh, call them out or whatever, let me know. Uh, I am perfectly open to everything. I talked to Brad and Brady, uh, I believe Sunday, and they were talking about maybe doing some explanations for kind of movements, but it's kind of hard to do that without arms. I tried my best to put arms on Bob, but it just still, <laughs> it doesn't work quite right. So uh, I'm still, I haven't given up on that concept, but I'm still uh, trying to come up with a better way to do that concept. I understand, Bob. Uh, if you've got recommendations, feel free. I'd like to review what we did. Last time. You'd like to review what we did last time? Yeah, just not for very long, but just to, as a refresher. That is completely dependent on this old man remembering what we did last time. Uh, maybe, I, maybe I should have actually watched the video that I posted. Uh, we did blocking drills. Yeah. You came out with both hands. Yeah, I think we just we went 45, 45. We did single. Yes. Double. And yeah, we're right. doing pin float right. and stepping back. So, uh, that's right. We went forward 45 and we went back 45. Okay. So, uh, let's just, yeah, let's just work on that a little bit. So, pin float. Uh, Let's just first do the forward, the two forward 45s, single, double, head. Uh, we'll just do 10 of singles, 10 cross singles, both directions, or rather half and half, each half in different directions. Uh, and then we'll do doubles, and then we'll do opposing doubles, and then we'll do heads, and do opposing heads. And then we'll do the pin flip drill going to the back, uh, and then maybe if that goes well, then we can actually do, I was looking at some old exercises today and Taika had us in South Carolina at the Jim Lowe seminar back in 2005. He had us doing a drill where we went back corner, back corner, full reverse. So maybe we'll get uh, to that uh, version of this little shenanigans we're doing. All right. So, the, the first deal we're going to do as uh, Snake has made it, uh, so, and neither as Trinidad. So, everybody here is upper, upper belt level, really. Uh, so, we might as well throw the back fist in there. So, instead of just going to the left with the left single, uh, go to the left with the left back fist inside single, natural stance. To the right, the right back fist inside single, yeah, and so on. So that'll be our first drill: back fist inside single, back fist inside single, uh, and we'll just go to the two forward forty fives. So here we go. Ready? Each back fist inside single, knee back fist inside single, song back fist inside single, and remember because it's lead hand, a back stance is fine. Fourth count to the right. Back fist inside single. Go. Baku. Sichi. Bachi. Q. Two. Okay. Now we're going to do cross body. So when we come up, our right shoulder, we go to the left, our right shoulder is back. To get that equal length long enough, we've got to do the hourglass. So we're going to go, we're going to turn to our left, throw our right back fist inside out, and vice versa. Ready, left, each back fist inside out. Right, left back fist inside out. Song. Chi. Go. Raku. Sichi, Hachi, Q, Ju. Remember all those, that back fist, I'm trying to come up without bending and come forward. I don't want to go one, two, I want to go one, and then do my two covers. Okay? All right, so now we're going to do doubles. 
So when we go left the first time, the left hand will be up, the right hand will be up to the right for our 10 count. It'll be left, left, right, to the right. All right, so we'll be going back fist, double, or back fist inside the foot. All right, so starting to the left, left will be left hand back fist, ready, each. Now remember, that back arm is short, so we have to go into our bonus. Right, with the right, ready, D. Song. G. Go. Waku. CG. Hachi. Q. Ju. Do this on your own. I just realized I forgot to turn my overhead projector on and I'm trying to see everybody again. So give me a second to find my remote. All right, just making sure since that's HDMI out to the projector, did, the, did my mic or audio change? Okay, nobody's stepping forward with major issues. All right, so we went left, left. Now we're gonna go left with the right back fist. And we've gotta drop into that hourglass to get you got to drop into the hourglass earlier because when we went left, left, left hand's here, and it doesn't matter because it's got the range. But this time, as we as we step in, we're trying to do a backhand with a right, so we need that extra range. So we've got to be in that hourglass just a smidge earlier than the other time. All right. So we're going to the left with the right back fist, and then vice versa on the other side. Ready. Each back fist in double. We're going to go to the right and the left. B. Song. G. Go. Waku. Sichi. Hachi. Q. And Ju. Just hearing chimes, just making sure nobody's having. Issues, no messages. Okay. Poor Becky tried to log in and got stuck in the uh, waiting room for like an hour last time. So, uh, trying to be a little bit more diligent with that. All right. So now we're going to go back fist to the left, inside, and that hand that was did our back fist is going to come in and shoot up for a high face head. Upper block, rising block, whatever you want to call it. There's 500 words for one motion. So the left, the back fist hand covers in and shoots up. And injected in there is that extra little cover. So you're actually going cover or back fist, cover, cover, up, and return. Or you can return here. Just depends on what you want to do, what you're visualizing with it. All right, and then so to the right, we'll be back this inside, inside, yeah. All right, to the left, ready, each. B. Song. She. Go. Who? Sichi. Q, Q, okay, that is pretty simple. Now we're gonna do, turn to our left with the right, back fist, inside, inside, right up. So it's, cro we're cross body, all right. All right, so to our left and the right, ready, each. So we need that hourglass to get the range. Right with the left hand. 
Ready, D. Song. G. Go. Roku. Chichi. Hachi. Q. Q. All right, so we've done single, double, head to the 245s. Now we'll just do them with a pin float and go in back. All right, so uh, we'll just do, I call it single motion, but there's obviously multiple motions to it. Uh, so I'm not going to add in the, the windmills after it until we do at least the one set each direction. So uh, I'm going to be going back left at a 45 or back right at a 45. So I'll pin and float and slide. Okay. So I'm sliding to my left. Right foot is forward. Back fist inside single. When I pin and float and go to my right, I'm going to back this to my left and do my single. Are we good? Thumbs up. Thumbs up for Chigao. I see thumbs up. Okay. I see no Chigao. All right. So we're going to go to our left, left rear, southwest, and throw our right. And then when we go to the southeast, our right rear will throw the left. All right. So let's do that. Ready. Pin, float, each. Left pin, right float, knee. Right pin, left float, song. Left pin, right throat, throat. Yeah, common, common English word, throat. She. Right pin, left float, go. Left pin, right float, Boku. Right pin, left float, CG. Left pin, right float, Hachi. Right pin, left float, Q. Left pin, right float, Ju. And thanks, Marty, for uh, you know joining me on uh, uh, Duolingo today. All right. So now we're going to do the cross cross body. We're going to cross contaminate ourselves. We're going to go to the left rear with left hand, back this, and then single. All right. We're going to be anybody else. It went away. I don't know what that was. Okay. All right. So I'm going. Going to right hand left float. Go to my left back, but I'm going to use the front hand crossing. All right, so here we go. Right pin, left float, each left back fist, inside, left back, out for single. Okay. Left pin, right float, right hand's going to strike, ready, knee. And it's short, so I need that extra. It's short because it's cross, so you got to get that hourglass in there. All right, Son. Hourglass. Left pin, right float. Chi. Hourglass. Right pin, left float. Go. Left back fist. Left single. Hourglass. Left pin, right float. Boom. Right pin. Left float, C G. Left pin, right float, Achi. Right pin, left float, Q. Left pin, right float, Q. All right. 
singles out of the way, makes the doubles. So we'll go to our left back, and our right hand will be on top. So we'll do back, right back to this, right double, with that hourglass. All right, we're going to go back left. Right hand, left float. Ready, right back to this, each. Right back corner, southeast. Ready, left pin, right float, D. Song. Chi. Go. Si Chi. Achi. Q. And Jews. All right. So that was the same size. Now we're going to cross by. So I'll be going to my back left, but shooting the short arm forward for a back fist. Kake double. All right. So I'm going back to my left and shooting my left. Ready, right then, left float, each, right back, left hand, right float, right hand, knee, right then, left float, left hand strikes, song, left then, right float, to the back right, right hand strikes, ready, chi, and float, go, 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 si chi, a chi, you leave it, Becky? Q. Jew. All right, so that's our doubles out of the way. Now we got. Hey, Lee. Face. Yes. Do you think you could put those red wrist guards on your wrist? Because your arms disappear against that backdrop. So could you put the red wrist guards on? Or if you had two different colors, you could put one on your left and one on your right. And a cowboy hat. <laughs> what we mean is that you're too pale to see. You guys got to be easy on him. You know, he's been locked away in his basement for <laughs> a month now, you know. <laughs> uh, it's going to look like that. Gonna I've been scuba diving with it. It's going to be bad when I get back to the desert. Oh, wait, no, I haven't been scuba. I've seen, well, we went on a float trip, wasn't it, Lee? <laughs> Lee, where did you go? Who's that guy? <laughs> <laughs> Becky Perfect. ran off. Do you want red work or do you want both red? Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Will the black work? Oh, Lord. <laughs> I'm guessing the helmet was overkill. All right. That helps. Bring out the holy hand grenade. We're good. I guess. <laughs> All right. All right. So now we got heads left. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I can see it much better myself. All right. So now we're going to go left back with the right and right back. Oops, sorry. Ugh. Left back. Yeah, with the right. So that we're on the same side. And when we go right back, it'll be the left face. All right. Make sure. We're coming across our body and up. You can't see that when I'm here. It just looks like I'm missing the opening. That I'm just kind of missing the opening. But if I was at this angle and went across my body and then scooched up, you see that I covered my center. All right? So we'll be going left back with the right, but we're going to go back fist inside up. Okay? 
and then we'll go to the right with our back fist inside inside left hand just goes back inside up right throws that little cocktail hit and strike in all right first count going to the left right is our back fist ready each don't forget pin float going back to the right knee And then float, song. And float, chi. And float, go. And float, go. And float, si chi. And float, a chi. And float. And then flow ju. All right, so now we've got the cross uppers to do. So when I go to the left, I'm going to do a left back fist, but I can't reach. So that very first motion, when I go back, I've got to get into that hourglass right off the bat. Okay, all right. So right then, left float, ready, each. Left hand, right float, knee. Song, chi, go. Roku. Chi Pachi Q Q All right From what I can see uh that's starting to look pretty good All right so we've gone at this angle, we've gone at this angle, we've gone back, and we've gone this angle. So we've basically done, oh, we lost Becky. I'm guessing. Yep, I'm I've got to go. Thank you. Done these angles. You're going to take care, Becky. Good to see you. Uh, so we've got these angles. And we're going to play with some other angles maybe a little bit later. But I would like, I really like these back angles. And if you look at a lot of the techniques that Taika did, it was off of either in his younger years, he tended to go, he was quicker, and he could go forward quite a bit. As he got a little bit older, he went sideways and back a little bit more. Just because, you know, things in life start slowing down a little bit. Uh, he would say, though, it just depends on your, really, a lot of it depends on your opponent. If you got that young kid, that your opponent, you know they're going to be probably pretty quick. This is your safer angle. You're fighting the drunk who's had a few drinks at the bar. Going forward is probably your, your best solution because it helps bind them up a little bit. But that's another philosophical rabbit hole that we go down. So what I want to do now is I think what we, we ended up doing Wednesday is I want to do a pin and flow back fist. So we're doing what I call our first reactionary strike. It's Everything's launching straight up, and I do my cover. From here, I'm going to do windmill strikes. So a single reactionary strike is straight. What you got to, like a lot of us did in horse stance, is your more follow-ups, right? We're, we're going in a more curved motion. So reactionary, straight, follow-ups are ellipses, whether it's a windmill ellipse, or it's a bicycle, back pedal, bicycle, forward ellipse. And then the third way, which I didn't cover in the last class, is anytime you're coming from something else. So you've done that several times, but I didn't really explain that that's kind of like the third way to do a block, is if, if, I've, if I've done the head strike and then the arm's here, just dropping into the block. So you got single, you got the lips, ways of getting into blocks, and then you've got 
kind of a transitionary from another way where you're dropping into a block. Right. So we're going to do a little bit with that. And what we're going to do is we're going to pin and float. We're going to do what we did this first time, but we're only going to go one direction and get some reps in. So I'm only going to go to my back left. This is the, you should be able to figure out by, by doing these drills long enough, which side is your faster side. I typically go back to, well, to the left in general is my quicker side. So I'm going to stick with that. If right, we do have one southpaw in it on the uh, camera right now. If going to your right is quicker or you're kind of cross pollinated and for whatever other reason you want to go to your right, it feels more comfortable. Uh, I would encourage you to practice both ways outside of the session, but just for this session to do reps, we're just going to go one direction. So you're not going to bump into any other dojo members. If you do, uh, something's, something's wrong. All right, so I'm going to go back left for all of these motions that I do. I'm going to do reactionary straight, and then you see that one's a curve, and then I'm going to do another curve, and then I'm going to come up and strike my imaginary buddy's neck. So what I'm doing, here's Bob, I'm going to pin and float, and I'm going to come up straight, and then single or double, doesn't matter. So you can imagine I'm outside their arm. I guess this does work a little bit. So once I'm there, I can scoot in and do an arm bar, and then I can take this top hand, and I just do one more double, except the hand coming up is on the inside, and I turn my body. So that's going to be the drill. We're going to pin and float. We're going to throw our arms out straight reactionary and do our single. Then we're going to slide in on a double. So I just took a little step with my left and drug my right and drug my left. And then I turn my hips and do another double. So the hand coming up on this double has to be on the inside to clear the arm to get to the neck. Moito on the ice One more time. So pin float, arm straight, reactionary, inside, outside, slide, double. And think about that heel. Get down where I need it to be. That heel comes inside. Now to pivot to get to the neck, I'm going to drop my left arm as my right heel pivots out and strike the neck. And so I'm just, whatever, depending on my range, my knuckles may hit the neck, my Radio bone may hit the neck. Uh, I may actually hit down in here. It's just whatever, whatever lands, whatever my range ends up being. I don't like to hit the zygomatic up here in the cheekbone. It's wherever you, you land, but the motion is pretty much the same. If I stand here and don't do any footwork, it's straight inside out. And now I do a clockwise double. And then I bring this right hand up the center. Oh, look at that. Nachi. So I, I basically end up in that position. All right, everybody on the same page. All I see is good thumbs up. Uh, regrettably, not everybody's on the top, so if you're off screen, sorry, I gotta hit the mic. All right, and float, here we go. Ready, each, out, straight, inside, out, clockwise with the shuffle. Heel turns and strike the neck. Okay. Obviously, this is a kind of a visualizing drill. I'm trying to get you to visualize where we can go straight, we can go around, we can hit the neck and drop down and do a strike. I'm trying to get you to visualize those different manners that the evil B word blocks uh, can, can be used for things. Right. So here we go again. Then low, straight. Left inside, right outside, double, pivot, double and drop, or single and drop. Ready, pin, float, straight, inside, out, clockwise, counterclockwise with your feet, and you're up in there. All right, again, pin, float, straight, reactionary. Left inside, right outside, clockwise with the shovel, 
Right foot, counterclockwise, and up. Okay, here we go. In float, straight, inside, out. Clockwise, counterclockwise foot, right up and out. Okay, we do a POB. In float, out, inside, out. Clockwise, counterclockwise heel, and right in. All right, then float, ready, straight, clockwise, clockwise, counter. Oh, I said a little bit different that time. I said clockwise twice. You've been doing it clockwise twice. You've been going straight, and then this is your clockwise pattern. You're going straight, that's a clockwise rotation. And then a full clockwise rotation. Now, technically, this is clockwise, but my heel goes counterclockwise. So my hands, the entire time, is straight reactionary. Clockwise, 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 clockwise. The only thing that changes is my footwork, because it goes back, hourglass, shuffle, and then turn. And that's that same footwork we do in exercise two, turn, turn, I'm just going at this angle. So I started at this angle, I shuffle in, and then I turn. And as I turn, my hands are going clockwise. You can be a free direction. All right. So, then float, here we go. Straight, inside, out, hourglass, and turn. Ready, and float. Straight, inside, out. Shuffle in with that hourglass. Clockwise. Heel turns. And strike. So, I'm not sure how well you can see it, but I'm pivoting. It's like, like I'm doing a cast dance for my pivots. I pivot on the ball of my foot, not the heel. Okay, I'm pivoting on the ball. So when I pin and float, I come back. I shuffle in hourglass. It's my heel that moves forward, and then my heel moves away from me. Heel moves forward. Heel moves away. The front of my foot is nailed to the ground. Right? Then, look. You people were peeking at the close-up there. Ready, straight. Inside, out. Around with the shuffle. Heel picks up and moves out and strike. All right. So just do a few of those on your own. And I'm going to stare at the and move around on my cameras and see how it's going. So you're switching directions, Brad, on your on that last one. So you're going in here, here, and then let me do it facing the camera. So straight inside out, and then see how I'm going mm -hmm. clockwise, and then clockwise. So it's it's like I'm doing this motion. I'm going the same direction. I just on the last one I come. I'm outside. My red wrist is on the outside. Red wrist is on the outside. Very last one, red wrist is on the inside. Uh, what it looks like you're doing is going here, and then you switch, you put the brakes on, and then you come back. So don't put that br the brakes on. Anytime I have to change directions, I have to put the brakes on, come to a stop, and accelerate the opposite direction. So I want my red wristband, I want to just go clockwise, and this is just a good drill just to do this, just keep going clockwise, and then every once in a while, throw one up on the inside. So I'm going clockwise, throw it up on the inside. But it's still going clockwise. Okay. It just comes a little bit more forward, because it's got to come where it's used to going on the outside of the elbow. This last time, it comes inside the elbow, and it's doing that to get 
if it came on the outside of the elbow, it would hit the arm. So it's coming inside the elbow to come up and strike. And let's see, who else can I pick on? Working well, all by herself today. Kim's got it. To get these views down. There's the one I was trying to get. So, Jerry, you're switching directions as well. You're switching directions. Well, we're not. So, would you, would you do that first right. practice here? And then I'm going clockwise, and then that hand, my elbow just bends, extends back, and I come in. So it's it's still doing the exact same motion, just at the end. See, I'm going. I don't go. I don't switch directions. Okay. So see how I'm going clockwise, counterclockwise. I don't do that. Okay. Uh, I want to keep going clockwise, and then I just switch if it's on the outside or the inside. Okay. So every one of us. Uh, started in some martial art where we stood in a horse stance and we went clockwise, counter, clockwise, counter, clockwise, counter, for probably millennia of life. I mean, years of life we trained that way. And Tyke is like, once you start going one direction, you have to put the brakes on and then switch directions. It's not efficient, it slows you down. So he wanted, and a lot, most of the motions that he did, if you look at, look at a lot of the techniques he does, he'll, his may change the direction I'm facing, but the the technique is still going clockwise. And that's why we call it a windmill. You know, the windmill is just spinning in one direction. The wind hits it and forces it, you know, clockwise or counterclockwise. Uh, but that's what that's what I'm looking for is I want I'm here, I'll get towards the camera. I'm here and then I go clockwise and I continue that clockwise motion. So it's like a rolling back fist almost. Instead of going here, clockwise, so cap. Uh, yes, yes, very much like a rolling back fist. Uh, like you do in, in several of our kata where we do that motion. Okay. Uh, after, you go to, uh, after you go from there, the, the transition to. And, so when you come out to here and you roll through clockwise, the transition as you go over, when you, when you switch, when you pivot, from the pivot. So the pivot is, is, is you're still going clockwise on the side. So, yeah, so the only difference in my, if you watch my red wrist, I do this motion is clockwise, right? I go back this clockwise, clockwise, clockwise. Uh, let me turn this angle a little bit. So back this clockwise to the single, clockwise to the outside, clockwise to the next. The, the ellipse changes just a little bit because I got into the first one I go outside, the second one I go inside. But this is the motion outside the elbow, inside, outside, inside. So I know we're, you're, we're looking at this on a, a crappy video feed, but it's, so it's kind of hard to see that three-dimensional motion, but this is outside, this is inside. Okay. See that? So outside, inside. But my arm, the deviation of my arm is very little. It's very subtle. And that's Tyka's windmill velocity. So basically, uh, with Tyka's windmill velocity, he would he would do changes with his body to change where my hand is going to land. So I can just sit here and do, I'll even like hold this arm. And you see, as I do body changes, stance changes, I can hit left side of Bob, right side of Bob. Face of Bob, 
that the bottom, I can put this, the part that really needs to be fast and smooth to cover my body is doing the same, going the same direction, right? So I want to keep that going the same direction instead of just stop it and switch my momentum to go the other direction. Okay, cool. Cool. Thank you. And let's watch a couple more people. So, Leah, would you say this is like doing arm bar when you come up and you do the grab and you follow through? Uh, would you? Uh, I lost you at the very beginning of that. So arm, arm bar, catch, grab, follow the, through. Where we do that, where we pull the wrist down into the arm bar. So, like that first part is kind of a, like a cover. Yeah. And then. Arm bar, arm bar, and then get the arm out of the way to get to the neck. So, you know, it's just one example, but uh, if I really need, if he throws a right punch and I did this initial cover, uh, I need like arms that stay there, uh, and the left one started coming towards me, then instead of switching directions and getting hit, my arm just continues to go clockwise. And then I'm on the outside of this arm. That makes sense. I know it's hard to visualize. But if you think of the right arm, I cover, I did my sequel, and then the next arm's coming. Right. I either impact the next arm with my left, or if it was a little bit slower, I would impact it with my right. And then I'm on the outside and see clockwise. Now I can hit him on that side of the body. So, really, if you look at some of the older videos that I have of Taika online, as well as, I'm not the sole source for Taika videos, but uh, if you, how do I get this back? There we are. If we get, if you look at a lot of Taika's videos, he would pre-pick which direction he was going to go. He would pick that in advance. Bad guys are either going to punch me or kick me. Uh, you, you can't really defend against the spit very well, but, you know, your weapons are the legs and the hands, and I guess head, but uh, if they're close enough, right? So I can pre-pick that I don't care what this guy does, I'm going to my left and I'm going clockwise with my hands. So if he threw a right punch, that right punch, and this is part of the visualization that I'm really trying to get you guys to think about, if my bad guy's here and I pin and float and a straight punch comes, then my straight hand's coming out, I touch it, I'm here, and then I just keep going clockwise until I either have an arm bar, a wrist lock, or I've got a neck strike, a neck strike, a psychomatic strike, whatever. Until I see, I go clockwise, I windmill, until I see that opening that's hopefully going to finish the fight. If, for whatever reason, I'm more comfortable going to my right, then I can float, I come up, and now I'm going counterclockwise until I get the opening that I need to finish the fight. Um, and then he also would do retreats, pull straight back, come straight back from the opponent, or maybe somebody that was really quick charging, he might come straight back and do the bicycle, back pedal, and he'd go, he would go back until he saw an opening and then he, you know, use his body to change the nature of his attack. So again, that's part of that whole Han Shin philosophy. Bottom body controls top, top controls bottom, right controls left, left controls right, front controls back, back controls front. Uh, so instead of thinking about uh, this, this arm's coming out, so I've got to do the left, I've got to go counterclockwise, and then he punches with the right, I've got to go clockwise. Oh, now here comes the left again, I've got to go counterclockwise. You end up putting the brakes on to deal with the other hand, and so there's no, there's no zing to, the, to your primary direction because you're putting the brakes on to switch directions. But if you just let, your, let this stuff continue to go with minor variances where I go outside or inside, depending on what I need, what, what tool is needed. Do I need a Phillips or a straight flight screwdriver? Do I need needle nose or visors? You know? uh, that's handled here, but the bottom body is what changes that direction. Clockwise, if you look, there's no way from, I don't know how to say this, but kind of rational thinking, 
when you first look at something, it doesn't seem like there's any way in hell I can hit the left side of POVs back here with these two knuckles by going clockwise. I've got to switch and do a rich hand or something. But Tyka would say, all I did was go clockwise. I lift through the heel, drop that heel, and now I'm to the outside. Uh, all right. Make it sense, everybody? I'm trying to figure out my views here so I can. Any problems with that? Everybody good? We lost Scott. Everybody else is good. I think we lost Marty as well. All right. Uh, so along that line, what I'd like you next to kind of just work on your own. Uh, and I can, I'm just looking at the time real quick. Oh, 20 minutes. Hello. All right. So think about a 10A throwing a change up in there, a distraction. All right. So what I want you to think about in practice, try this, because everybody in here, everybody that's left right now is Udonchik. <laughs> Everybody that's online right now is a gotcha with the exception of Scott and he's in my day. Maybe with the rest of them, I don't know. I'm staring at his blank room. And Brady. Uh, oh, he's back. Don't talk about Scott. <laughs> no, no, it's uh, okay. uh, I'm gonna have to bow out. Oh, yeah, Brady. What if I can't hear okay. I can't hear what you're saying. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna say sorry, I have to bow out. All right. Uh, uh, Brady can't hear. But at any rate. Bye Scott. Bye. All right. So I want you to think about doing now. Think about this. Think about breaking up and throwing in something to break up the routine. If they're punching right, left, right, if that's what they plan on doing, we all know that first one's coming out, and we want to break that up a little bit. So what I want you to do is the same thing. Then float, throw this out. But instead of just shuffling in with the clockwise double, what I want you to do is when you go for that double, is throw either a straight thrust kick or inside roundhouse or some sort of kick like that. So I'm pinning the float, I'm doing my straight and my initial cover, and then instead of just stepping in with that outside round double motion, kick and do that motion, then come up and do your pivot. So the second you kick, retract, land, and pivot with that final motion. So that, that kick motion will cause a little change up, a pause in their second punch. The first punch is coming or else we wouldn't be at this party, right? The, the first attack. I mean, it could be a knee coming up. In that case, my hand would hit it. Uh, but some sort of attack's coming or I, I would be doing all this on the magic. So again, I'm gonna pin float. The second I see that shoulder move, both hands are going up, cover, and then when I go to do this motion, I'm going to kick a leg, whichever leg is there. All right, so if the bad guy steps, throws a right with his right leg, I'm going to this side, I'm going to, I'm going to probably clip that right leg. If he, if he does a reverse punch, if he punches with his right and his left leg is forward, I'm probably going to hit somewhere in that femoral triangle on the inside of that leg. All right. So that's what your, your goal is at this point. So here, as we do that motion, we do our kick, and then our heel comes up when we land, and we just rotate. Sound good? Let's try that. I think we lost him as well. One by one, they all go away. I haven't been ignoring you. I'm just sitting here working as well. There's no point having video feed on while uh, while I'm just staring at a screen doing work. So it's interesting stuff. I'm paying attention. All right. Sounds good.
I notice when we add the kick that it enforces that you make sure your weight is on your back foot. So, so when we did it without the kick, Brady, so we initially, my right arm is long, because it's, it's forward, right? So a back stance, I got a back stance. And then what we were doing, when we did that first windmill, that first double, we stepped in and went to hourglass, right? So when you go here, your weight, you're in a back stance. When you're doing that first motion, you're in a back stance. You're, weight comes off of that leg, naturally it's already it's right in the back stand, so you don't have to do any other shifting. And then, as my leg, and for those that don't know, I'm, I'm again, uh, I've got a, particularly my right leg, I've got a hip dysplasia thing. I cannot kick straight sideways like I, like everybody likes to. I have to kind of kick up. So if you look at my foot, it looks funny. Should be more this way, but I just physically can't do it because uh, it's my mom's fault. I blame her. Uh, but my weight is back which makes it very natural for me to come up and do that kick. And then, when I'm here, I'm in an hourglass. When I land, I'm in that hourglass. And then, both heels flip to my right as I do that one last windmill. For some reason, you are 100% muted. I'm gonna, I don't know how you got muted, but Brady, you're 100% muted. Okay, there, there you go. You uh, the point I was trying to make was that sometimes I was being sloppy and my weight was on the front foot, but adding the kick makes sure that I put that weight on the back foot. That's all. Yes, yes. Good observation, yes. Jerry, are you southpaw as well? Can you do? Yes. You're lefty? Yep. Yep, lefty. I'm in my right mind sometimes, though. What gave it away? All right. So I want to cover, we probably got like a half hour left. Uh, I want to cover a little bit different way that Tiger would retreat. So he called that shallow line. So on my little spider web I got here, if I go that direction, I'm in this little triangle here. I'm in that triangle when I go that direction. He called that shallow line, meaning I'm closer to my opponent. Uh, so like Bob's here, I'm fairly close to my opponent with both arms comparatively to what is next, which he called deep line. Deep line was a little bit different. So it's mainly a pirouette. So if I float my right foot, and I come back this direction. So now, 
I did a different quadrant. So I'll do it from here. Shallow line, I'm in this front triangle here. Deep line, I end up in this back line, back triangle. Shallow, deep. Shallow, close, deep, farther away. And really my right hand or my back hand, when I get into that deep line, deep line is pretty, pretty far away from where like Bob would be, right? Quite a ways away. So I want to do basically something similar. I want to think about this and I'm going to look back, but I'm still going to throw my hands out. So I throw my hands out and I'm in the deep line and then I'm just going to keep on going clockwise and shoot forward. But I'm going to do something with this back leg. All right. So what I'm going to do, and this is very close to some, some motions we do in kata, is I'm going to throw my hands out. I'm going deep line. But then I'm going clockwise, and the back foot comes up. So in relation to Bob here, if I throw my hands out and come up, and I may do an extra motion depending on what's there, but I can't reach him with that back hand unless I press my front knee forward and bring this up, and then I can reach it. And I could even go further if I turn that foot as I come up, and now I can go even further. All right, so hourglass, I'm essentially turning around into an hourglass and coming up to get my range. So I'll go hand straight out, clockwise, and shoot up. And straight up as I pirouette around. You want if you're going to stay back, it feels right to let that foot, that front heel, drag back around into a back stance. But I'm not staying here. If you do this motion, you feel like you want to bring to uncoil that spring. But what I want is I want to leave it in an hourglass so I get my extra range when I shoot that hand back up. All right. So I'm here. I'm shooting both hands forward and doing my inside as I come to that deep line, and then I'll just keep on going around, come up, and you can sit there and practice. Out of range, in range. Out of range, in range. Don't let your knee stay back. If I let my knee stay back to where it's directly over my ankle, I'm still out of range. I am closer, but if I let my knee go over my toes, I can actually get some movement out of it. If I just leave it right there, I don't hit it. All right, so just on your own. I'm not going to make this a, uh, an exercise at this point, but use something to help you visually. Uh, I have talked about like putting a trash can or something in front of you so you can kind of visualize your opponent. Uh, an example of that would be, you know, there's my bad guy. My bad guy's a stool. So I know my shoulders, his shoulders would be right about where that stool is. So I can sit here and shoot forward. Go clockwise once, clockwise, my knee is over my toe, and shoot up to where I think my opponent's neck would be. If I'm lined up shooting here, yeah, my opponent's probably not there. Unless he held his up. Right? So figure out something you can use, trash can, a chair, or something, to better visualize what you're doing here. Again, my first response needs to be straight because that's quickest. I'm gonna I'm gonna squat and take that weight off my right foot as it comes back. Now I'm out of range. I'm going to press that knee. I'm going to I just keep doing clockwise motions until I'm in and come up and strike. You probably noticed, instead of just striking with one hand, I went ahead and gave him a nice little gut shot at the same time. Sound good? Any questions on that? It's called deep line. Switch my camera view here so I can see people hopefully. Some people taking notes. Brady's got like. So Taika had us do this with the concrete walls at the dodo or church, actually, at that time period. So he'd have us get to where we could touch the concrete walls. And then, you know, he'd, 
he'd yell, he'd grunt or yell each and he saw whatever. And we'd have to reach out as we were retreating and touch the wall and then go clockwise one or two times and then come back in and our knuckles had to hit the wall, right? Uh, very good range drill to understand how far forward your knee needs to go, how far your back leg has to trail up to get that range. Strike coming up on the inside on that last one, Brad. Coming up on the inside again on your last one. There you are, yeah. That'll give you the clearance to get over his arm to his neck. Again, trying to visualize. All right, it has been an hour and a half. And so what I've been doing the last few classes that have worked is the last half hour, uh, I just let everybody in their own little uh, Hollywood Squares box do whatever they want help on. So you can continue working this drill if you want. Or if you want help with Nahashi, just start doing Nahashi and I'll kind of go down the line and uh, ask, you know, hey, Bob, you need any help? Hey, Brady, you need any help? Uh, all right, sound good? Here's a story. All right. I'll start with uh, Sir Bob Koenig. I can't think of anything right now, Lee. I'm just going through this drill you're doing, so I'm good. Can you hear me? Okay. Sounds good to me. Yes, yes. Yep. So just keep on playing. Brady, you got any questions? No, he's too gone. All right, somebody just departed. Uh, that would be Steve. Steve left. I don't know if. Sorry, I was still in my water bottle. I'm, I'm good. That was a delivery. Hey, Leah. Thank God Brad was here. Our uh, minority uh, classification would be just really low. Glad I can contribute. <laughs> you, got, you got any questions for Brad? Uh-uh. No. I tried going through some cotton. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. Then, um, I don't know. My shoulder, I messed it up a while back, and it's weird. Like, I can't do, like, a yeah, I saw you your arm. forearm strikes or anything. just feels weird. I can't lift anything with it. I don't know how you do it at your age, Lee. Yeah, I know. I'm just ancient. Yeah, you'll learn to use the other hand. All right. Uh, Jerry, lots of questions. Maybe we have a lot of as well. <laughs> so uh, one that I did have is, I guess, when uh, when the hands, when you change going back, this one coming back, do you have it set up here upwards or you have it down? Which, or does it matter when you're actually going through the drills coming through with it? That's the one thing I kept trying to watch your hands and do. I just want to make sure I get it right when I practice it at home. Because it looked like you're actually going to get a little more light on the, uh, on me. So this is, this is typically what we call a single. Right. Uh, I just single always cover, right? Even if you look back like it's 1968 video, uh, uh, particularly Saison is the first one you can really see it clearly on. You know, in Saison where you, you turn 90 degrees and go do your three punches. Uh, Tyke is always hitting right about where that point is. Right. So, so he's here, kind of in that Saison position. So usually when I'm doing the single, I'm doing the Saison position. I will sometimes bring it back to here if I'm trying to replicate particularly uh, a move in, a, in some particular kata. Right. But usually I like to keep it out. So when I'm doing this 
this exercise or any of these exercises, I'd really like to have that hand out here, unless I'm thinking specifically of, uh, of a pull kind of motion yeah. where I'm trying to hold on to something. But if I'm just visualizing strike, strike, then I want this here so it can launch. So, uh, and uh, one thing I probably haven't covered with you yet, Jerry, is you know, when, like, you know, exercise, I don't know if you knew exercise one and exercise two and those kind of things, but kind of initially when we first learned everything, you know, it was here and here and then it moved to here. Mm -hmm. And then later, every time we did like a single, if we did a single, he'd make us do a groin shot. So, uh, Wait, is that, is that what you call this? Web, exercise two, uh, things like that, like exercise. Was that like this, like the one, cause you showed me one, uh, you know, we're single, double in the upper. Is that the one you're talking about? Yeah. Well, a lot, a lot of the drills he had us do, we would, we would go multiple directions and we would go single. When we first learned stuff, it was like, Single, then we turned into a double, then we turned into a head, okay. then we turned into a single, or it could be at various angles. Okay. But later, he said, even, even though you're just doing a single, you should still cover your groin. So he made us start doing single, groin, double, groin, head, okay. groin, single, groin. So that kind of led us to the not pulling all the way back to here. Mm -hmm. If I'm, if I'm here, I can, and I, somebody starts picking up a leg to kick me, I just cover, and I pull all the way back here, I've got twice the distance to cover than if I'm here. And really all I do is punch straight, and my hips move because I go from back stance, just like we did the last couple of classes, I can't remember uh, if we did this the other day with you, but I was talking about the backhand can't reach, so you gotta do an hourglass. Well, that's all part of this, if I'm here, and they start to pick up or shift their weight to kick. You could dip into it. I can I can reach I can reach that knee and hit either with the pinky side or the thumb side just by I'm already halfway there. And I throw that heel forward and I can take that leg out. So there's there's numerous good seminar videos uh, where Ty did demos, you know, before seminar or before tournament, and he took people's legs out. Uh, where they come up to kick and he hit either from oral or common perennial and just wipe them out and hit the floor. And you look at those in hindsight after him giving us more knowledge later on, and he wasn't doing this. He wasn't tethered to his rib cage. He was he was in Saison with this hand equal to that elbow and just that mere stop motion with his heel going forward, he was able to either hit inside or outside. So, so it looks like the bottom hand is the knuckles are pointed towards the opponent, yes? Versus, because the way we learned it way back when was the fist is pointing to the inside, because it's like, just like so, yes? Sort of. Not this, but it's supposed to be like this, yes? So, so if you look at my elbow, yep. when, when we do the yo punch, and I can't remember if I talked, I can't remember if I talked about that when I was out there, but the punch comes up at an angle. So it's following my rib cage, and then... I make my hinge and I rotate up. It's that same kind of deal. I'm in that, it's like, it's like I'm holding the bottom of the steering wheel, right? right? Your steering wheel, I'm holding it down at like nine o'clock. Uh, so my hand's at 45 degree angle. I gotta turn the right way. So even like Nahanshi Shodan, where we come across our body, I'm at a 45, I'm trying to tilt so you yeah. can see. I'm coming out that same way and then I flip it. And now I'm at a 45 this way. So I was at a 45 coming out, and then it flips and rolls to a 45 okay. there. Uh, I got uh, two videos that uh, have to compile. The one is just on single double face, single double head, uh, with a whole bunch of just little idiosyncrasies like that. Uh, and then the other is on the various Oyata punches, as far as uh, pivot on this knuckle to come up. There's also uh, changing the angle as it comes out, and you pivot on this knuckle oh, wow. and hook in. So that's the Oyata. That's the Oyata hook. Uh, so if you if you think of the punch, uh, the basic Oyata punch is coming out, and then you make the thumb size a hinge. 
and it swings up. So it looks like it's coming this direction. It's coming to my opposite side, but then it it curves this way. Okay. Uh, if I if I come out to that point where the elbow releases from my ribs and I pivot on that knuckle, then it's a different arc. If I, I can pivot on those knuckles, I can also uh, I can do it like a revolving door. So this is a right hinge. This is a left hinge. This is a revolving door. Revolving door. So each different way I do that creates a different sized arc. And so I've got, I've got a video that hopefully I'll have it uploaded by tomorrow. Uh, the, the, all the block ones, that'll be uploaded uh, sometime tomorrow. It's gonna take about 10 hours to uh, compile that video and then uh, another probably 10 to get, of course I'll be asleep for part of that. <laughs> uh, to get that the punch, the punch video completed and compiled. Uh, but at any rate, yeah, those those motions are are pretty important. This is this one. So one real big thing about blocks or forearm strikes: uh, single, double, and head. The primary hand, the one I'm thinking about striking with my forearm or knuckle or whatever I'm doing. The reason I'm leaning forward is I want a perpendicular line with my upper body. So single. See my my upper arm. Is perpendicular to my body. Double. Both, both arms are perpendicular. Now, when you do an upper block, you're like, oh, it's not perpendicular. Cool. Yes, it is. The upper arm is perpendicular. This goes across. So the foundation for single, double, and head, and of course, low block is just half of double, right? The for all of those core blocks. The upper arm, the foundation of your strike, is perpendicular to your body. I don't want, I don't want to be out here. I definitely don't want to be out here. You get a little leeway, a few five to ten degrees, depending on what you're doing. But you're much better off. The liberating force is if your upper frame is perpendicular. perpendicular. So, you know, when I do my fall, when I do my fall in Nakanchi. I'm matching my finger, and I'm not going out like this, kind of like that. We originally did that. We went way side, and we went, the hand went past the shoulder. I didn't want that. He wanted little motions. So, see, I didn't go hardly anything outside my body. I'm just going there to there. My arm, even though this part of my arm may do some little corrections, this upper part doesn't travel more than a few degrees when I'm doing so. Now, like, if I'm doing the disco version, you know, changing clockwise, counterclockwise on my doubles, or even I'm doing elliptical singles, I'm doing that motion. My elbows have got to move a little bit because I, it's just not possible. I've got to kind of do a little bit of squeeze. But then at the moment impact, if I do a double and impact, this is perpendicular. This on that arm bar, both of those are perpendicular. Right? I don't want to be out here if I can help it. Some techniques, <clears throat> Tyga's basic kind of rule is if the opponent's at a disadvantage, I can be a little bit at a disadvantage, but I got to be at less of a disadvantage than him, right? So I don't want to do like Pinot Godon like we used to do, where you're out here like this, right? Pinot Godon now, let me do that motion, is this is here. So I'm here, and see my upper arm? I'm doing an arm bar, being on go down, and my thumb changes the perspective of this, but see where I'm at? Yeah. I'm, I'm really almost here, but I just rotate that thumb a little bit and change that. But I start, I start that arm bar here. Now he's at a position of disadvantage as it's starting. Then I can stretch it, because he's, at that point, he's already been poked. Which takes it out. So that's kind of that's kind of where I'm heading with that uh, video that should be up some at some point tomorrow. Uh, maybe if I get insomnia and wake up at two in the morning, Marty can see it. I don't know. Awesome. Uh, but uh, kind of one of my recording missions right now is to go through all of the queue requirements. I've got queue requirements on the website that are just uh, uh, you know they're there for memorization for students. 
they're there for a reminder more than anything because they get, they get the information class and then they're like, oh, what are the requirements again? They can just look at that video and kind of follow along. Well, the video that should be up sometime tomorrow is a lot more detailed, angles of the arm, you know, uh, very common, that like's almost getting in the way. Uh, very common thing that people would do is their doubles here to where my elbow is like resting on my ribs. It's in real close. Taika said, make a fist, put it in your armpit. And the second it touches your tricep, that's where, that's where your arm should be. It should be out like that. And then if I'm going to double, see how I'm matching? So both arms are the same way. Down, that block, outside or inside block, double block. I shouldn't be this way. I should be matching. It's my upper body. So these are perpendicular. <laughs> There's, and I know we talked about this. Somebody, uh, a video you recently watched, somebody was doing all their doubles, and this was their end position. Remember that? Yep. You know what I'm talking about here? Yep. So they're covering the groin, center line with the bottom. I can lose his mind in class if somebody did that. So the, the groin cover happens in between the, the strikes. This should be perpendicular. This should be perpendicular. So when I'm impacting force against something, whether it's uh, whether I'm doing it as an arm bar or instead of hitting with my forearms, I'm hitting knuckles or a combination. I'm hitting the bottom of the hand and knuckles. That all should have structure behind it. All your buildings, unless they're pyramids, or the leaning power tower of Pisa, all your buildings are a flat angle. Any science reader in the world, that's what you got. Oops, I guess I got to go farther back. That's what you got. Any skyscraper in the world, right? Mm -hmm. Leaning power tower of Pisa is a screwed up skyscraper, essentially. And then, of course, pyramids, they've got, they're at angles, but they're connected at the top. So, whenever I'm doing my single, whenever I'm doing my double or low, when I'm doing my head, I'm getting that structural foundation by going perpendicular to my body. I can would scream at us if, if anybody did an upper block like this. You know, you can see that. See how my arm, my elbow is center of the body. It shouldn't be. It should be here. My hand should be going up at an angle, but I've got structure here. As this comes up, and this, if it's 90 and less, it'll collapse on impact. If it's more than 90, it's got structure. So this is 90, or this is perpendicular, and then this is plus 90. Yeah. All that will be in the video uh, that is about 30 minutes long that just covers single double head, single double head, basically, and all those little things. Uh, I list some of the Tiger's pet peeves that drove him nuts. Uh, if if you have your hand here, did you guys do it this way, Jerry? Did you do your, like, your yes. singles to where this yes. was flat? Back in the 80s. A, a lot of people did, I know. Uh, one of my core students, uh, his, his, his old instructor in the 80s, had him do it flat. Well, if you just sit here, go to 45, and then try to get that extra 45 out of it, your, your elbow screams. If it already goes just like this, and then takes your hand and goes that extra 45, you feel tension here, you feel tension up in here, back, back in your traps and everywhere else. Natural. So if I'm coming up and trying to throw kinetic energy up and I'm going here and I impact something really hard, I'm going to do damage to that, the older style of head there, the, the funny bone, the end of the funny bone. I'm going to do, I'm going to hit, if you go up to like some solid and just hit it as hard as you can, even just a bag, you're going to feel pressure here, particularly when you're over 50. <laughs> for a few of us here, everybody except for one or two of you there. You're going to feel, as you hit that, you'll feel pressure up here. So you got those lovely spots on your shoulder that are going to rupture when you get older and you got the spot right here, it, it's not good. <laughs> so if you got that 45 structure straight or the opposite 45 like we do in the Hachi, those are all fine. You can do those relaxed. But even going, if I go flat this way, 
Now I start feeling pressure contra to what I felt here. So years and years of people doing this, and Tiger even did it in his old days. He said, I, I stupid didn't know that. You know, and so a, a lot of what we got from Tiger in his in years was him, his body getting weaker, weaker over time, and him realizing that, hey, I'm not fast enough to go that way anymore. Uh, when I hit something, it hurts now. Why does it hurt? Oh, I've been doing it wrong for years. Well, you so, know, I did, I did it wrong for many years. I mean, just look what happened to me. I haven't heard anything at all, Brady. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm getting like a, about a five second delay when anybody starts talking. I don't hear them for five whole seconds. Oh. Uh, I do get the entire audio, but I don't actually hear. It doesn't uh, matter. Five five joke. Oh. Yeah. So, at any rate, uh, we just got like a minute left. Does anybody have any final questions? Do you want any help next time to do an audio check before the next session? Uh, you can jump in. Uh, usually at least one person jumps in 30 minutes early or so. Uh, there was two of the day and everything was working perfectly until the third person got on and then that's when we started seeing issues. I, I really don't know. Uh, Saturdays have been really good. Wednesdays, not so much. Don't know why we get all this. And I'm still on my bandwidth meter. I'm still at like 950, 960 up and down. So who knows? Oh, well. All right, guys. Well, thanks for playing. Uh, if you got any other ideas, feel free to let me know and I'll see you next time. Awesome. Good job.